All right, so tonight we are gonna talk about the four things you need to master to make fat loss a lifelong success. This is something that I call my Fueled Physique Fat Loss Formula, and it's just four pieces of a puzzle that if we can get these things like mastered, we are good to go. So, what's coming up? So we're going to talk about the four things you must look at and eventually master. And I guess to say master, I use that a little, um, I'm using that like a little lightly. So it, we never master any of this stuff, but we just get a whole lot better at it. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to um, the slides. You are gonna get really clear on what your missing link is when it comes to getting the results you want. So I have people say all the time, like, look, Lauren, it's not the exercise. I got the exercise down. It's something else. Or I know exactly what to eat. Something else is missing. So we're gonna find out what that something is for you so that you can start your transformation right now tonight. And then I have a bonus tip. I have a number five tip at the end um, to, that gives you a how-to of exactly how to get started with that missing link. So just another quick intro. My name is Lauren Bradley. I run a online nutrition and lifestyle coaching business called Fueled Physique. I've been in business for about um, almost three years now. And um, what else? I have a cat, Turtle, who I'm in love with, a dog, Candy, who I can't stand to be away from. I'm getting married in May. So there's a lot going on in my world, but definitely Fueled Physique is, I mean, this is all I do. This is my number one thing. So let's just dive right in. So the Fueled Physique Fat Loss Formula, if you use all of these pieces and you put them together, what you can get from it is weight loss, for sure. Feeling more confident and in control around food getting stronger, leaner, and more toned. So tonight we're gonna to be talking exercise, we're gonna be talking nutrition, improving our hormonal balance by stress management and self-care, improving your relationship with your body, and this is a huge one. I've asked um, some of my one-on-one -on -one clients for testimonials of the program. And you know, a lot of people, when they join my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, which I told you guys about on Tuesday, they join because they wanna lose weight. But what they get is so much more than that. And you're going to see that in the testimonials that I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, improving your relationship with other people. An amazing thing happens when we start just being a little bit nicer to ourselves um, and talking to ourselves in a different way and treating ourselves better. We start treating other people that way too. And our relationships change. You'll get really clear on exactly what you want to accomplish and why. So often... We set out on some goal and we, we feel like failures time and time and time again. And the reason why that happens is because we're not clear on what that exact goal is. We don't know exactly what we're going for. It's like saying, my goal is to lose weight. Okay, but how much weight do you want to lose? How are you going to do it? What steps do you have in place? What support system do you have? It's not just easy to say, I'm going to eat healthier. What does that mean? So by using this formula, you're gonna get really clear on exactly what you want to accomplish. And then finally feeling ready, willing, and empowered to do the work to get the results that you want. Because you're know, you'll know exactly where you're going, you're gonna know exactly what you have to do to get there. All right, so we're gonna dive right in. Who else is on here with me? Hey, Nicole. So like how you eat, and there's a big red flag here, because if the way you're eating makes you feel any of these ways that I'm about to go over, stressed out because you're, you're stressed about going out to dinner with friends, or you're stressed about vacation, or you're stressed about, I don't know, going to a party because you're not in control of what's there and you're afraid you're going to eat too much. If you're feeling deprived, all of a sudden your cravings are through the roof because you're not quote unquote allowed on your plan to have certain foods, that's a red flag. If you start getting jealous, looking at other people's plates thinking they're so lucky that they can eat that and I can't, there's something off there with your plan. If you are hungry, a lot of the time, now hunger is a normal cue and when we feel it, it's nothing to panic about, but if we are hungry, often, or if we're telling ourselves, no, I can't eat because I already ate all of my calories for the day, but I'm, I'm really hungry, 
that's a red flag. If we start becoming obsessed with food, if we feel like we're addicted, like I can't keep my spoon out of the peanut butter or I can't keep my hand out of the popcorn bag, out of control, binge eating, emotional eating, if we get anxious around food, and if after we eat we feel foggy and unfocused, these are all signs that the way you're eating is off in some way, whether it's too restrictive, not balanced enough, which we're going to talk about coming up. Um, all of that stuff. So if you're feeling this way, note it. And then um, we'll circle back to that at the end of, with uh, questions. So liking how you eat could look something like this. It's something like, oops, it's something like eating, you know, the spinach, the produce, drinking the water, lean proteins, lentils, asparagus, all of that stuff with a little bit of the quote unquote treats mixed in. So the donuts and the pasta and the popcorn. A lot of times people think, no, I'm an all or nothing person. I'm either 100% healthy or I'm totally on the other end of the spectrum. But when you think about it, we hear a lot to eat uh, by the 80-20 rule. So eat well 80% of the time. And then 20% of the time, you can kind of be more flexible with what you choose to eat. So that means if you eat, let's say, just to keep it easy, five times a day, that's 35 times you're eating a week. So anywhere from like three to six times a week, you can kind of loosen the reins a little bit and you'll still be within that 80 to 20%, that 80, 20 rule. Um, and it won't really have an adverse effect on your results. Now, that's not to say, you know, a couple times a week, go out and eat a whole pizza, like go have a piece of pizza one night, have a glass of wine one night. It's fine. What I will say is what you choose to indulge in matters because like if you're choosing pizza and a sub and then wine, that's going to slow down your results a little bit, but still just know that you can probably afford to give yourself a little more freedom than you currently are. And I know it's scary, but just putting that out there. So let's talk about the weekends because I know for some people the weekends are really tough. It's unscheduled time. It's, you know, we don't have our I'm working nine to five kind of thing. And so it's kind of a free for all. What I'll say about the weekends is if we don't deprive ourselves during the week, we won't need the excuse of it's the weekends. Well, I'm just going to have whatever I want. And I used to do this a lot. I would eat so well Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then come Friday, I was a Dunkin' Donuts. Saturday, I was getting breakfast sandwiches. And, you know, it was just, it was a free for all. Um, and then once I started really just loosening the reins like crazy on the rules that I had for myself, I started eating the same on a Tuesday as I do on a Saturday. And that's the goal. Some strategies is to, or another strategy is to create non-negotiables for Saturday and Sunday. So these are like two or three things that you do no matter what. Maybe it's getting a smoothie in, in the morning with a serving of spinach in it, or maybe it's making sure you sweat. Or maybe it's for me, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is grab a liter of water and I drink that first thing, especially on the weekends because I'm going to probably be drinking more on weekends than I do during the week if, you know, if we're going out and stuff like that. So that's one of my non-negotiables. And then of course, implementing the staff method and the treat yourself method, which I teach my clients to do, which is really just two methods to help them stay really, really mindful and help them feel more in control of their choices. So what does optimal nutrition look like? It looks a lot like this. Fresh produce on the bottom, lean proteins, because that combo right there and dietary fats, if we put these three together, we're good to go. Um, fiber, high water content, protein takes a long time to digest, so it helps us stay fuller longer. Same with dietary fat. Dietary fat also tastes really good, so it ups the satiety. And then we can add some whole grains in there because we will be getting plenty of carbs through our produce because both vegetables and carb um, vegetables and fruit are carbohydrates. So we have our carbs pretty much covered there, but you know, I know people love their pasta and their rice and stuff. So we can throw some whole grains in as well. And then the treat yourself part. So on this grid that I made, it says once or twice a week. And that's if you're like going all out. That's if you're doing the donuts and the pizza and all of that. If you're just having like a few squares of chocolate a day, that's not a big deal. 
I don't think any of us really want to be eating pizza every day. We probably wouldn't feel so good. So again, just be mindful and just kind of know yourself what, what works best for you. So this is what I see a lot when clients first, when we first start working together, they, um, I have them track their food for five days just so I can get a good idea of what they're eating, what the timing of the meals look like, and kind of where we can tweak things. So what I see a lot of the time is something like this, banana and coffee at breakfast time, maybe they'll throw a Greek yogurt in there too after for like a mid-morning snack. Lunch will be a salad with tuna on top and low-fat dressing, snack, crackers and hummus, and then after work they go to town. They just snack, 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 and then they have dinner and then they snack some more. And there's nothing wrong or bad with any of the foods that's listed on this slide. I'm not saying to not eat those foods, but the way that we're eating them is not serving us. And here's why. This salad just makes me so sad every time I see it. That's why I put it on this slide. This diet is unbalanced. This one that I just showed you, it's totally unbalanced. There's carbs all over the place, very little protein. It's plain and boring, yet safe, right? Because the foods that these people are eating, they're healthy. So it's safe to eat. It's just not that exciting. And I am a huge believer that we have to like what we eat. We have to almost look forward to it if we want it to last. And that's not to say every meal has to be mind blowing, but you get where I'm going. It's low calorie, low fat, low fiber, and low protein. All of these things work against us in terms of lasting weight loss. And yes, even the low calorie part, because here's what happens. When we start a diet like this, a lot of times people will cut out the snacking. So after work and after dinner, we'll minimize that to like popcorn and maybe like a couple pieces of chocolate when people are really dieting. What happens is they lose a bunch of weight and then they hit a plateau after about like a month or two. And then they have nowhere to go from there. The only thing is to cut out more food. So they're walking around starving, low energy, or increase their exercise, which they're not gonna have any energy to do eating this way. And then lots of deprivation given the amount of snacking that's happening later in the day. And this is a common problem with people before they work with me. They are snacking all throughout the day. The results of balancing out our eating, so the produce, the lean proteins, the dietary fat, eating in a balanced way means that we're gonna be snacking minimally. Our meals are gonna keep us satisfied for three to four hours, so we're not gonna to need to go into the snack cabinet at work and get chips or something like that. We're gonna have, it's not just you know Cheerios for breakfast or a banana for breakfast. It's gonna be a nice, robust breakfast, and that doesn't mean it has to be at 7 a.m. It can be, your first meal can be at 11 a.m. It can be whenever, but that first meal is gonna be a, a nice, solid meal so that it keeps us satisfied for a while. Same with lunch and then same with dinner. Our cravings will be very low because we'll have balanced nutrients. So our blood sugar is not going to be going up and down. We're not going to be like bouncing off the walls, then crashing. Our energy will be up and then we'll feel focused and clear after eating. And this is something, oops, this is something that I want you guys to really um, start noticing. When you eat something, how is it making you feel? Like let's say in the mornings you usually have a bagel for breakfast. Try, you know, one time this week or next week, try, um, I don't know, like a couple hard boiled eggs, a serving of, of sliced peppers and I don't know, something like sweet, some fruit or something like that. And see, see if you notice a difference between if you're feeling clear, foggy, how fast you get hungry after each meal. Just start to notice how food is affecting you. It's really, really important. All right, moving on to number two is like the way you move. Just like with dieting, if you don't like what you're doing, it's not going to stick. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard this. I run because I know it will help me lose weight, but it really hurts my knees and I actually don't like it. Somewhere along the way, we got told that running is like the key to weight loss and it is not, especially if we don't like it. I'm not working out right now because I don't have a gym membership. 
worst excuse ever because there are so many at home workouts that you can do and you don't even need to do hardcore workouts at home you can just go for a walk um, I just can't get into strength training and I don't know why I've heard this one a lot too and we're gonna really dig into that one um, I'm just not motivated to do it so these are all people's barriers to exercise and really they're just excuses so let's break those down a little bit and a little note on strength training so while I do believe that we have to like what we're doing in order to stick with it, if weight loss is your goal and tightening up and toning up is your goal, strength training is a non-negotiable. That has to be a primary form of exercise for you. So there are definitely tons of tricks and strategies that we can get into to get you strength training if it's really not your thing. But unfortunately, we can't really Zumba our way to a tight toned physique. We have to lift some weights. So here's the fat loss exercise period, period, <laughs> pyramid. At the bottom, of course, is strength training. We're working large muscle groups, compound movements, so that we can build muscle, strengthen bones, and burn body fat more efficiently. Next is leisure walking. Going for 30 or 45 minute walks, couple times a week, super effective for fat loss. No, you're not burning a lot of calories, but you're lowering your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone. It just helps you wind down. And if you go for like a 10 or 15 minute walk after a meal, it really helps with digestion and helps keep things moving. Then comes interval training. So this is all the popular stuff like hit classes and, um, I would even say probably body pump. This is not as important as people have made it to be. Sure, it's more effective than just running for an hour on a treadmill, which is that top of the pyramid cardio. Um, but strength training and walking is where it's at, for sure, when it comes to fat loss. What most of my clients do before we start working together is a bunch of cardio. And I get it, it's comfortable. There's a low barrier to entry and we're gonna get actually into all of this now, but I understand why cardio is the thing, especially group exercise classes like Zumba and HIIT. All you have to do is show up and people tell you what to do. I love that personally, but I also know that if I want to build up my shoulders or lose some fat faster, I have to start hitting the heavier weights. So cardio is great for beginners, like I just said. It burns calories, it builds up endurance, it's really beneficial for our heart and lungs, it keeps us conditioned. But after time, especially for people who are running a lot and then they're spinning and then they're going on the elliptical and then they switch to the arc trainer, lots of wear and tear on our joints. And just like caffeine or any other drug, if you want more results from cardio, you'll eventually need to start increasing the amount that you're doing. So if you get awesome results from th walking 30 minutes on the treadmill a few times each week, once that slows down, your only other option is to, if, if you're not willing to go the strength training route, is to walk five times a week, and then six, and then seven, and then you're walking for 45 minutes. So um, it really just kind of builds upon itself. And this is why a lot of people, you might see them on like Instagram or Facebook, they're like, oh, I'm doing 40 minutes on the step mill before I go teach my class. And then after that, I'm gonna go take a boxing class because it's all cardio. And we need to do more, 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 more to either maintain our results or get better results. If you love cardio, the best fat loss cardio you can do is sprints. And sprints can be relative, right? So if I'm running on a treadmill at like 9.0 sprinting, your sprint might be 12, it might be five. So sprints is whatever's gonna get your heart rate super, super high for like 30 seconds, and then you drop it back down and repeat. So for strength training, it builds muscle, which easily burns fat. Strength training turns our bodies into fat burning machines. When we're vegging out on the couch on Sunday night, watching Netflix, getting ready for the upcoming week, our body's burning fat. The more muscle we have on our body, the better. EPOC is um, excess post-oxygen consumption. I always get that wrong, so I'm hoping that's what the acronym is. But basically, it's a fancy way of saying that your body burns calories at an accelerated rate post-workout. 
for 24 to 48 hours. So if we do an intense strength training workout, again, relative to the person, our body's gonna burn more calories for us. Helps shape and tone, strengthens muscles, ligaments, and tendons, which reduces our risk of injury. Helps speed up fat loss, and it's the minimal effective dose. So it takes less time to produce a better effect than cardio. And here's what I wanna say in terms of um, strength training helping speed up fat loss. A lot of times when people start strength training after like a month or two, they're like, okay, my jeans are much looser, but the scale is the same. What is happening? And there's a big myth out there that muscle weighs more than fat. Muscle does not weigh more than fat. So let's just clear that up right now. If you, it just takes up less space than fat. So here's kind of my analogy. Here's how I want you to picture it. You have a one pound rock in your hand and then you have to go collect a pound of feathers. How many feathers do you need to equal one pound? Whereas you only need a little rock for one pound, right? So the rock is your muscle, the feathers are fat. A pound of fat weighs the same as a pound of muscle. It just, the, the muscle just takes up a lot less space. All right, moving into number three, and we're gonna get into some mindset stuff here. So what are you telling yourself? Our struggles that we have with food, with our body, with our mindset, those are not things that we developed on our own. Oftentimes they've been passed down to us by our, I say hopefully here, well-intentioned kind of female figures in our lives. So whether it's our moms, our sisters, aunts, grandmothers, whoever it is, they pass their stuff down onto us and then we take it and run. We don't even know we're doing it until we start looking into the stuff that I'm gonna go into right now. And then of course there's societal factors as well, like who we follow on social media. That's why I love when my clients do a social media purge. They just unfollow every page that makes them feel bad about themselves. Um, or what we watch on TV, the magazines we read, whatever it is. So those all play a part in how, the stories we tell ourselves, how we feel about ourselves. So what we need to do is start playing detective and ask ourselves where these stories came from. What behaviors did you see, say, let's just use mo mom for example. What behaviors did you see your mom exhibit when you were younger? Was she always dieting, talking badly about her body, talking about other people's appearances, or what other people were wearing or didn't wear? Was she constantly, you know, going on Weight Watchers, off Weight Watchers, telling you, you should come to Weight Watchers with me? And it's not coming from a bad place most of the time. We, we want to think anyway, right? Um, because that stuff was passed down to her by somebody else and that was passed down to the, the other person and, and it just goes throughout. It's this whole journey, but it can stop with you. So let's go into BITFAR. So BITFAR stands for beliefs, thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. So our beliefs, so these stories that we have create our thoughts, which create our feelings, which determine our actions, which create our results. So I'm going to give you some examples to kind of make this um, a little more clear. Oops, I didn't write it down. Okay. So let's say I believe that I have really bad genetics and I'm going to be overweight for my whole life. Then I start thinking, well, there's really nothing I can do to, there's nothing I can do about it. It's my genetics. So then I start feeling kind of hopeless. Like, well, does it even matter what I eat? Because, it, you know, I'm, this is what it is. It's as good as it's going to get. The actions I take are maybe not exercising, maybe not prioritizing healthy foods, which creates my result of being overweight. So can you see how that kind of, it paints a little bit of a picture. And a lot of times we don't even really realize what our beliefs are around food and our body. And so what I do with my clients is we run through a worksheet called the narrative. And it really prompts you to think, where these issues with food or your body stemmed from and how we can start to rewrite that story. So changing your limiting beliefs. How do we start changing these stories in our head? Stories like, this is just too hard. I've never been successful before. What makes me think I'm gonna be able to do it now? I don't have enough money. I can't join a gym. I can't hire a coach. I'm an all or nothing type person. I'm either all in or I'm all out. It's not worth it because I know I'm just gonna screw up. My kids, family, husband, work come first. I can't, I can't do this stuff. 
it's too overwhelming. I don't know where to start. I don't even know what to do. These are all limiting beliefs and these beliefs will continue to be true for as long as you believe them. So the longer you keep playing this stuff in your head, I'm too busy. I don't have time for this. This is going to be way too hard. I'm not going to be successful. All of that is true. You're going to prove yourself right every single time. The beauty is, is that through practice, we can change this script. So what we want to do is go from disempowered thinking to empowered thinking. And listen, we are not going to be 100% at this all the time. There are still moments where I'm like, oh, I have to go to the gym. This really sucks. I don't want to go. Right? Most of the time I go anyway. That's why I, I pay money so that I have to show to my appointment because left in my own devices, I probably won't go. But just to say like, I'm not saying we have to go from disempowered thinking to 100% empowered thinking. So disempowered thinking is like, oh, I have to go to the gym or I can't lose this weight. I shouldn't eat brownies. Oh, I'll try. I'll try just really gets my goat every time. <laughs> I'll try is like, you're either going to do it or you're not. Um, I really want to lose these 10 pounds. I just wish I could lose these 10 pounds. Or if I could just stop snacking, things would be so much easier. All disempowered thinking, right? This takes our power away completely. Moving to empowered thinking, I'm really excited to go to the gym. I can't wait to work with my trainer. Um, I can lose this weight. I can eat healthier. This is how I'm going to do it. I can eat more cookies if I want to, but I want to make a mindful decision about it. No more I'll try, I will. You either will or you won't. Um, change I want you to, I'm going to. Not I want to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to lose these 10 pounds and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm willing to do what it takes to reach this goal. And it's important to me, so I'll find a way. Can you see how this is more empowering than saying like, I really want to lose 10 pounds. Like, look, losing this 10 pounds for whatever reason is really important to me. So I'm going to find a way to do it. So we're stepping into our power by using more powerful, more positive language. And that's going to help us get to our goals a lot faster. Because remember, like I said on Tuesday, we can't make a positive change from a negative mindset. It just never works that way. And if we do make positive changes, the chances of them sticking around for the long term are very, very small. So back when I was kind of coming out of my own binge eating fog and kind of body dysmorphia and all of that, what I started doing after I committed to no more dieting was rewiring my brain. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I did. First one is affirmations and mantras. When a negative thought would creep in, I wouldn't say to myself, oh, I can't believe I'm still thinking like this. I shouldn't be thinking like this. I would use a mantra or I would use a word to kind of pull me back. So what I like to have clients do is when we go over their why and, and kind of like what their whole reason for joining Fresh Fit and Fearless is, we pick a word. So it's something like a lot of times people will come to me, they're like, I want to lose weight, but I just want to feel confident. And so confidence is their word. So when they walk into the break room at work and they see the plate of brownies, they don't have to go through that tug of war in their head of should I, shouldn't I? All they have to do is repeat that one word to themselves, confidence, 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 because that's what they want. That's the outcome. And it's usually enough to pull them away from the brownies to make a mindful decision of whether they want to eat them or not. Something else I did was celebrate every single win. I have a really good friend of mine who was uh, losing weight. She had lost 10 pounds. And when she told me, I was freaking psyched. And I'm like, oh my God, are you so excited? And she was like, no, not really. And I was, I'm like, why? And she's like, well, I've lost the 10 pounds before. She's like, and I have so much further to go. It doesn't really seem that exciting to me. And I get it, like I totally get what she's saying because I did the yo-yo thing too and I know that that's where she was kind of stuck. Um, but if we don't celebrate even the smallest things, we cannot repeat that behavior because what we reward, we repeat. So if she maybe had celebrated those 10 pounds, who knows, maybe she would have lost 10 more pounds and then 10 more and then been at her goal and lost 10 more. But she didn't want to celebrate because she was so afraid that the results were going to go away. 
And that's what happened. So we have to celebrate everything. I would celebrate if I didn't eat six Pop-Tarts and I only ate four. I'm like, damn, that's better than I did yesterday. Or if I only ate like one sleeve of Oreos instead of three. I'm like, all right, this is great. Or half a jar of Nutella. None of these things are like healthy habits per se, but they were healthier than what I did the day before, what I did the month before. I celebrated everything. I would literally tell myself stop when negative thoughts would creep in. I would say this out loud to myself or just in my brain if there were a lot of people around, but like I would be sitting there on the couch saying like, just go get food. Like, what are, you know, you're not gonna be able to do this, stop. Once we start recognizing the negative thought patterns, we can stop them. Once we stop them, we can start reworking them in real time. So what I started doing was, okay, stop. Am I physically hungry, yes or no? No, why do I wanna eat? Because you're bored. Okay, what else can you do to go get busy and get on board? Maybe TV's not the thing. And then I would get up and do something. I reminded myself that everybody struggles with something and that perfection is a myth. And this is so, this is such an easy trap to fall into um, because of social media, right? We see like picture perfect models on there and we're like damn she has it all together nobody has it all together everybody's struggling with something and lastly i committed to a more enjoyable life so i remember when i was dating i went on a date with this guy we were going out to dinner and for some reason every guy i went out with thought it was like they needed to explain themselves to me because i was a personal trainer and a nutritionist and this guy's like, oh, all right, he's like, so I guess if we're going out to dinner, I have to get a salad, huh? And I'm like, I don't care what you get, whatever. So he ended up ordering a salad. And he was this like big guy. And on the menu, they had fried chicken and the crust was Fruity Pebbles. And I know it sounds weird, but I was like, that sounds amazing. I'm going to get that. So I got the fried chicken and he was like beside himself. He's like, you're getting fried chicken and I get a salad. I'm like, hey, that's your thing. But all that to say I just started enjoying life more. I started taking food less seriously and, and the fat less stuff less seriously. And it resulted in a changed mindset, a changed body, and an overall changed life. I started going out with friends more. I started going out on weekends, which is something I never did because I wanted to be up at, I almost swore, at dawn to go to the gym. And actually, because I committed to a more enjoyable life, that's how I started hanging out with Dan. That's how we started dating. And now we're getting married in May. And if I was stuck in that food body prison I was in, I can guarantee that wouldn't have happened because I was no fun. All right, number four, last one here, take care of yourself. And this looks different for everybody. And I know self-care is like a big thing right now and maybe we're sick of hearing about it, but I'm hoping to approach this in kind of a different way. Um, one that you can resonate with a little bit better. So prioritizing yourself isn't selfish, it is necessary. We hear all the time you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to take care of yourself so that you can show up better for others. And I think that's crap. I think we have to take care of ourselves so that we can show up better for ourselves. Everybody else just gets to benefit from the work that we're doing for us. So this is what I see time and time again, burning the candle at both ends, always saying yes when we want to say no, doing everything yourself, never asking for help, never slowing down, sacrificing for others. And then what happens when we get downtime? The minute we get a break, we get sick, or we pull a muscle, and, or our body shuts down in some way, because we don't prioritize rest enough. We don't prioritize slowing down. We don't do the things, look at that cat. I love him. We don't do things like sit quietly for five minutes or just put on an app and listen to it for five minutes. 10 deep breaths. We can do this anytime, anywhere, and nobody has to know we're doing it. This is self-care. Walking, journaling, making a gratitude list, listening to personal, personal development audiobooks or podcasts while you drive or commute to work. Color, draw, paint, get creative. Human beings, we need to be creative. Hugs and holding hands. Hugs are my favorite. Sometimes I'll hug Dan and he'll be like, um, when is this going to end? <laughs> like, I just 
need it. I need it. I love it. Um, but this is all self care guys. It's not all, you know, this kitty says do my nails. I would do his nails so fast, but it's not all about manis and petties and facials and massages. Sure. That stuff is self care, but start here. Start with just the simple stuff. 10 deep breaths, five deep breaths, set an alarm on your phone to say, breathe for one minute. Just breathe in, breathe out. Your primary job is to take care of your mind and body for yourself, not for other people. Let other people kind of reap the benefits of it, but do it for you. Because if we just do this, everything else falls into place. If we prioritize our mind and we prioritize taking care of our body, we don't have to worry about, oh my God, how many carbs did I eat today? Because it doesn't matter. We're taking care of ourselves, we're respecting ourselves, it will fall into place. Once you learn how to tune into your body's wants and needs, it becomes a lot easier to work in harmony with it versus against it in struggle. So let's just go over the fat loss formula again. So like how you eat, like how you move your body, uncover your stories and change your beliefs, and then take care of your body and mind. All right, let's take a breath. We just talked about breathing. I'm gonna take a sip of water. How are we doing out there? We're doing pretty good on time here. Let me open up the chat box. Candace, hey girl. Zumba don't feel muscle. No, it does not. Candace Smith is a good friend of mine. She is like the strength, strength training queen, Juicy Booty. She did Juicy Booty June this year. Amazing. All right, so we took our deep breath. Are we ready to move on? I still have seven spots open for my one-on-one -on -one fat loss coaching program, Fresh, Fit, and Fearless. In Fresh, Fit, and Fearless, I am going to help you do all of the stuff I just talked about because I know it's not easy. Look, if this was easy, I wouldn't have a job and you wouldn't still be struggling. You would not be signed up for this webinar. If eating in a balanced way and exercising in a way that's effective and managing our thoughts and taking care of ourselves is easy, we wouldn't be here, right? So I have these seven spots open. We're gonna go through all the details of the program. I'm gonna tell you about my client's experiences. And then at the end, I'm gonna open it up for Q&A. So my friend Jess just went through my program and this is what she has to say. I'm not gonna read all of it, but basically she could not maintain her weight. She was up and down 15 pounds and she tried paleo, sugar detox, fat smash, all these diets to get it under control. She says, over my four months in Fresh, Fit and Fearless, I lost 15 pounds, never felt like I was dieting and made great progress in stopping behaviors that didn't suit me. Her big thing was uh, her company goes out to eat a lot she travels a lot for work. She was in grad school and she had about, I think, two or three weddings and two or three bachelorette parties. So that was going to be tricky, right? Whereas before she just would have been like, whatever, I'll figure it out later. We came up with strategies to help her not only enjoy herself, but still work towards her goals. And she got there despite all of the drinking and nights out and things like that. And the best part is she says, honestly, I don't think I've felt better in my body or physically in a long time. And these were her results from four months. Again, graduate school, working full time, traveling, bachelorette parties, dinners out, and she freaking crushed it. She did so amazing. And we're not done yet. She signed up for my one-on-one -on -one retention program too. So we're gonna keep going and her progress in the next four months is gonna be incredible too. I just know it. So what's included in Fresh, Fit, and Fearless? We have bi-weekly 30 to 45 minute coaching calls, which just help us keep you on track. They help us connect. We sit down and we talk about what's going on for you, come up with strategies, maybe, because this is a lot of trial and error, guys. Like there's no guide, there's no black and white, do this, don't do that type thing. I have no script for what I give you guys. It is all customized. So we sit down and talk about what works for you and what doesn't on these calls. You also get 24 seven text and email access to me. The text access is invaluable. I have people texting me their goals every morning. I have people texting me, hey, we're going out to dinner, what should I order? I have people texting me, um, 
me and my boyfriend just got in a huge fight and I don't want to go to the gym, but I don't know what else to do. We talk through all of that stuff. Customized nutrition, mindset work, and exercise coaching, again, not one size fits all. What we do together will not look like what I do with anybody else. And then lastly, motivation, accountability, and support. It's time to stop picking yourself apart when you get dressed every morning and complaining that your jeans are digging into your stomach and that you can't get your jeans up over your butt unless it's a juicy booty butt by Candace. That's the only excuse. It's time to stop hating the way you look in pictures. It, it hurts my heart when my clients are like, oh, look at my arm, it's so gross. It's time to stop thinking that way. It's time to stop feeling like you're out of control when it comes to food. Like food is the only way you can comfort yourself and you can't stop eating it. It's time to stop, stop dieting. Cultivating an abundance mindset and a positive mindset. Pushing delete on those old stories that are holding you back eating the same way on the weekends during the week, and finally find balance. In Fresh, Fit, and Fearless, I'm gonna tell you exactly what my job is. It is to take you from unbalanced eating, craving and carbs, or craving carbs and uncontrolled snacking, binge eating, feeling stuck, feeling unmotivated, being inconsistent, stressed and overwhelmed, feeling like you're at a loss, and this is just as good as it's gonna get. We don't wanna feel this way anymore, right? The ups and downs, the on track, the off track, the, oh, I'm feeling good today. And then the next day it's like, bam, I feel like crap. So I take you from all of this to knowing exactly what to eat and why. To feeling more in control around your food choices. To be a more mindful and intuitive eater. We'll develop this unwavering faith for you that you'll have in yourself where you'll start rewriting those old beliefs and stories to be more empowered, to leave that stuff behind that's not serving you anymore so that you can step into the best version of yourself, actually following through with your goals and feeling strong and confident and empowered. I mean, what sounds better? We can play it safe and not join the program and keep feeling like this on the left, this unbalanced, stressed, overwhelmed, stuck, maybe I'll just try Weight Watchers again, it's cheaper. We can keep doing that. We can do that for the rest of our lives. But why would we do that when we can feel like this, when we can feel empowered, in control, confident, strong, mindful, happy? Your job is to show up and do the work. So this is my client, Katie. She struggled most of her life with dieting and eating healthy. We started her program by mindset work, tweaked very little in terms of her diet and focused a lot on mindset. That dieting mindset ran deep. She says, we threw out my old dieting mentality immediately and began listening to my body, eating mindfully, and really digging into why the way she was eating before wasn't working for her and her goals. It was the Weight Watchers way. It was the counting calories way. And she says the way that we do it together is kind of fun, which is great. I love that. It's been four months and I'm still doing it. And this is a girl who admittedly would start something for a few weeks and then quit start again and quit. And there's all this back and forth. We just finished up the four month program. She just signed up for another four months because what happens when we reach one goal, we start setting new goals and we want help getting there too. So she's doing another four months with me and she has not given up once. Even when she has slip ups, even when she doesn't have the best day ever, she learns from it, she takes the lesson. She says, over the past few months, I've learned to love my body while still striving each day to be a healthier version of myself. My eating habits are leaps and bounds from where they used to be. I threw out my scale and I stopped counting calories. I eat cake and pizza without guilt and still make strides towards my goal of losing weight. I am the strongest I've ever been and I can't wait to get stronger. I would recommend Lauren 100%, but, and I love this part too, you have to be willing and ready to change. You have to truly want to change and be ready to miss the mark some days just so you can get up and do it better the next. And I love that because that's what she does. She's not a quitter. So here's the deal. You can join Fresh, Fit, and Fearless 
for four months for $14.39, or there's a payment plan for $3.99. I also have a six month option. So the four month option is for people who really just need a jump start. They kind of need a kick in the pants. They need some accountability and some guidance. The six month program is $2,100, again, a $3.99 month, monthly payment plan, and that's for women who have been dieting for years, are really wrapped up in the dieting mindset. They're afraid to eat certain foods. Food makes them anxious. The six month program is for them because usually when we hit the four month mark with, with those ladies, um, we're just tapping into the fat loss stuff. So I will be completely honest with you, and, and my clients are gonna tell you here too, it takes time. This is not a lose weight fast program. This is a get your mind right program. And then we all just let things evolve. That's how it works. So my client Kirsten says fresh fit and fearless has been much different than I had expected, but it's been exactly what I needed. I feel like the changes I've made in my diet have been in a way that I'm showing kindness to myself, and my body, not hatred or chastisement. I feel like it's brought healing to my relationship with myself. She says, I have desserts here and there, but I'm also enjoying spinach, carrots, and lots of water. And she says that this program has brought about a paradigm shift of sorts for me in how I view food and taking care of myself. It's an investment and it takes time, but it's changing my life and my family's life in a really good way. And that's the thing, guys. She's, Kirsten signed up for this program for her. Her family, her husband and her kids are reaping the benefits of that. That's how it works. In this program, I am with you every step of the way. There is nothing like going on a weight loss journey or a mindset journey and feeling alone. And in this program, you're not gonna feel that way. People ask me, will this work for me? Can you really help me? Are you sure I'm not too far gone? Do you think there's hope for me? What people are really saying is, do I actually believe I can do this? If you're asking these questions, there's something in you that maybe believes it's not possible for you, but it is 100%. You just have to be willing to show up and do the work. I know that I can help you. I know that because you signed up for these webinars, you have a struggle that you wanna solve, and I know that I can help you do that. You don't have to believe that you can do it 100% yet, but you have to show up and do the work. And don't forget your bonus. When you sign up from this webinar, the next three women who sign up for this program, off of this webinar, you have to have a book or a call booked by the end of the week. So your call can be booked for next week. It just has to be in the books by Saturday. You're gonna get bi-weekly virtual training from me. So we have our bi-weekly phone calls on the opposite weeks of that. We're going to get on Zoom, which is what we're on right now. I'll see you, you'll see me, and I will run you through a workout virtually. I'm also giving you access to my membership community, Living Lean Lifestyle Club, where there are over 20 women in there right now. They are amazing. They're so much fun. They're so motivating. And there's also a portal that goes along with this that has over 60 workouts in it. Tons of worksheets in there, ebooks, all the challenges that we've done. You get access to all of that. So it's actually more than a $300 value for that. That's okay. Plus, I'll give you a free copy of Metabolic Meltdown, which is 49 workouts that you can do at the gym or at home. Half of them are body weight, half of them are dumbbell, and they're 20 minutes or less. And I'm currently working on Metabolic Meltdown 2.0, so you'll get that when it comes out this winter as well. So one more time, this is how the program runs. Bi-weekly phone calls, which will help us keep you on track. It will help keep me in the loop. 24 seven text access to me. And you also get emails throughout the program once a week that will prompt you to respond with goals or how you're doing or whatever it is. So you get email access to me as well. Customized programming, tons of motivation, accountability and support through me and Living Lean Lifestyle Club, bi-weekly virtual training, Living Lean Lifestyle Club, and Metabolic Meltdown. You get all of this for $14.39. Not only that, but we change your life in the process. We take you from that disempowered thinking to empowered thinking. 
We take you from the struggle and the stress and the anxiety and the woe is me to, oh crap, I can actually do this. This feels amazing. I haven't felt this good in a long time. So now for your bonus. I just teased it because I keep going forward a slide. But this is how you're gonna start your transformation tonight. Make your plan. Here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna sit down, stream of consciousness, list out all of your goals. Do not stop writing for like three to five minutes. You can set a timer, write out every single thing you wanna accomplish, whether it's lose weight, get a new job, find a new boyfriend, find a new girlfriend, make new friends, whatever it is, hire a house cleaner, hire somebody to do your yard work, get a new car, whatever it is, write all your goals out. After the three to five minutes, you're gonna choose your top three. You're gonna write out your current beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and actions on those three goals, and then you're gonna rewrite them because there's a reason you haven't reached them yet. So then you're gonna rewrite your beliefs, thoughts, feelings, actions, and the result that you want. And then you're gonna put that new script somewhere that you're gonna see it every single day, and you're gonna read it every single day, multiple times a day, until it gets ingrained in your mind and it just becomes something that you do. Once you achieve a goal, you can go back to your list and pick a new one, rinse and repeat. So to get in on Fresh, Fit, and Peerless, you need to book a discovery call with me. So you can just click this button right here, or there's a link that was sent to your email. Um, book your call there. What we do on this call is I ask you a bunch of questions. You ask me a bunch of questions. We make sure that you're a good fit for the program and that the program is a good fit for you because I don't take just anybody in this program. We're working intimately together for four to six months. We need to have kind of the same expectations. So we go over all of that on the call. If it's a go, I'll tell you exactly the next steps, how to pay. If we need to set you up with a payment plan, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do after that. And then um, if it's a no-go, I'll either give you another option or point you in the direction of something I think will work better for you, okay? Any questions about the program, about anything that I went over? If you don't have questions now, you might have questions later. So I will actually, um, I think we're good. Guys, I kept it under an hour today. Woo. So excited. Okay, so I'm gonna pop off. Let me know if you have any questions um, about the program or anything like that. You can email me and um, that's it guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for staying to the end. I hope you got some good stuff out of this and um, I hope to talk to you soon. All right. Oh, who's this? Bye, Candace. Thanks for being here, girlfriend.